Hey, it is Andy with the Fence Post Indie Music and Vinyl Vlog. It is now 2023 and Death Cab for Cuties Transatlanticism turns 20 later this year. In many ways, that blows my mind. So today, I'm going to revisit that album, starting with taking a look at the vinyl versions released in its first 20 years, then unboxing my copy, which is the 10th anniversary pressing from 2013, and finally, I'll dive into the music itself and talk a little bit about some of the songs. First, the vinyl versions. Transatlanticism was originally released in 2003. In the US, the record was duly released on Barsook Records and Sonic Boom Records in one pressing. That year, it was also released over in Germany on Grand Hotel Van Cleef. My copy, as I noted, is the 10th anniversary 2013 pressing. It is the second pressing that took place outside of its first year. It is a reissue of the original from 2003, meaning that there may be some slight alterations to the packaging, but the music itself is pulled from the same masters. This pressing came on 180 gram vinyl with a white hype sticker. Sure enough, where the original was split between Barsook and Sonic Boom, the 2013 anniversary issue is just on Barsook, and the catalog number is Bark 32 LP, whereas the original just was Bark 32. The Bark 32 LP catalog number would be carried forward onto the only other two pressings, which oddly enough also include the hype stickers calling out the 10th anniversary, despite Discogs noting their release dates to be 2015 and 2022. These two pressings feature a hype sticker matching the one on this 10th anniversary one, except it's on a clear sticker as opposed to a white one. All three come with a 12-page booklet insert that includes lyrics, credits, and artwork. Why don't we take a look at that? All right, on to the unboxing. Like I said, it is on 180 gram vinyl. It's got two LPs. The wax is nice and thick. The sleeve itself, as far as I can tell, shows no real differences between the various versions. On the back, you can tell this is not an original pressing. There's no call out to Sonic Boom Records, just Barsook. The inside of the gatefold, very simple, nothing too fancy here. You've got some artwork on the left and just kind of that craft paper printing on the right. And the 12 page insert is very artsy. The cover kind of has some tie-ins with the back page with the string and you've got additional tie-ins to that inner left gatefold sleeve with the artwork on the front. And the artwork continues on the inside. I thought they said lyrics and credits, but there we go. It's really just kind of contained onto two pages, the two innermost pages. And then it looks like additional credits and information on the last page with the back cover there. Even though I don't really pull out the inner inserts all too often, I love stuff like that. It's just, it's super cool to flip through and look at and all that kind of stuff while you're listening to the record. All right, so let's take a look at the music itself. Upon its release in 2003, I remember Transatlanticism being so different from their other releases. It was more cerebral than what came before, more mature, the music more spatial and expansive, and that extended well beyond the lengthy near eight minute title track. Transatlanticism opens with The New Year, which is a top three for me of songs about the new year. It's one I love revisiting each January. So this is the new year and I don't feel any different, sings frontman Ben Gibber. It's so symbolic of the changing of the year when we tend to see the moment as a turning of the page, a fresh start to, well, new year. Yet when it comes down to it, it's really just another day. Expo 88. Now, I remember Expo 88. 
Essentially, it was the 1986 World Exposition on Transportation and Communication. Held in Vancouver, BC, my family drove up to Canada from the other Vancouver, down across the river from Portland. I was five or six in 1986, and while most memories from the event have eluded me after all of these years, the one that stands out in my mind is the concrete highway. I'll have a link in the description to the Wikipedia page on that, but I will note that it's quite fascinating to read about and to see photos of. Being a car guy, I was obsessed with that exhibit. Death Cab's Expo 86 will always be nostalgic for me for that reason. While nowhere near the best song on transatlanticism, it will always be special to me. Which brings me to transatlanticism itself. The title track is probably the most aurally and audibly stunning track Death Cab for Cutie had produced to date, and it remains among my favorites from the band's now 25 plus year career. Technically, Transatlanticism, the album, is a concept album that explores long distance relationships, and to no surprise, the title track is where that thematic element stands out the most. Listening to the song and its successor, Passenger Seat, there's this sparseness, this minimalist element to what you'll hear on the album, despite moments where things build tremendously, driving the music forward and producing a monumental and heartfelt sound. Really ties into that whole long distance romance thing. And then the second to last track, We Looked Like Giants. That is my favorite track off of Transatlanticism. It's hard driving, has memorable melodies, catchy and heartfelt lyrics, and great guitar hooks. Everything that you want from a Death Cab for Cutie song. Up until 2020, I spent 12 years living just south of the Pacific Northwest college town of Bellingham, Washington, where Death Cab for Cutie originated. And the talk of mountain passes and the guitar riffs, they all scream Northwest Washington. Death Cab came onto my radar shortly after the release of We Have the Facts and We're Voting Yes, which was released in March of 2000. My friend Pat introduced me to the band's 1998 album, Something About Airplanes, and you can play these songs with chords from 1997. I became a quick fan and fell in love with those albums. And then they released the photo album shortly thereafter. But Transatlanticism, I feel, stood the test of time more than any other release that they've given us before or after. Not only is it one of the best albums from Death Cab, if not the best, it's also a solid top five from 2003 for me. And 2003 was a pretty damn good year for music. Where does Transatlanticism fall for you in your best albums by Death Cat list? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.